Welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar, What Microsoft's Cloud Services Can Do for Your Nonprofit. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Susan Hopart, the Training and Education Manager here at TechSoup. And as you know, we work very hard to provide you with relevant webinars and presentations so that you can better serve your nonprofit and library mission. So I do want to ask in advance that in case you do have to drop off early or don't get to stay till the very end of the event, you do answer our survey questions at the end so that we can better understand your organization's needs. I'd like to talk a little bit about using ReadyTalk. That is our webinar platform. On the lower left-hand corner of your screen, you should see a chat box. And that chat box is for you to chat in your questions. You don't need to wait till question and answer time. You can simply chat in your questions throughout the presentation. The chat box is also there for you to post if you're having any problems, if you have any audio or visual problems. Um, we'll be able to work with you on the back end in the chat box to help you. If you lose your internet connection, you can always reconnect using the link in your registration or the reminder email that went out about an hour ago. If you're hearing an echo through your computer speakers or having any issues, you can dial in using the toll-free line that Becky has just chatted out. We are recording this presentation, so all the lines are muted so we can get a good clear recording. You'll be able to find this recording at TechSoup's webinar page in about a week. Um, this is where we share all of our webinar recordings and announce upcoming webinars. And you should check it out at www.techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You can also view our recorded webinars and videos on YouTube. And that's at www.youtube.com tech slash TechSoup video. You will receive an email as a follow-up to this presentation in about a week, and it will contain a link to the archived recording and all of the resource links that Linda shares today, as well as the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I did attach the PowerPoint presentation to the reminder email that went out an hour ago. It, the PowerPoint presentation is in the reminder email on the right-hand side in the blue bar, and it's under Downloadable Documents. And just in case you can't open that up, we will be sending that out again. So I'd like to t now take the time to introduce our presenter, Linda Woodup. We are very fortunate to have Linda on this webinar. She is a, she's a wonderful resource for all of us here at TechSoup and for all of you. Um, she manages client relations, um, and she's the Director of Technology Services at Tech Impact. Um, she is really focusing on moving nonprofits to leverage cloud solutions to lower IT costs while gaining access to best of breed technology. And Linda really is uniquely qualified to lead Tech Impact's technology services because she's been in the computer field since 1983, starting with assembling PCs. So she knows it literally from the ground up. And during those 20 plus years, she's worked in manufacturing, corporate, and retail environments on her way to the nonprofit world. And we're really glad she's here with us today. Um, we also have Becky Wiegand, and she is the program, uh, Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup, and she will be on the back end assisting with chat. And as I mentioned, I'm Susan Hobard with TechSoup. Our objectives today are to help you understand the range of Microsoft's donated and discounted cloud solutions. So we're going to examine some of the different license options and some of the different features, options, and benefits of cloud solutions. And of course, we do want to answer all of your questions, so don't hold back. Chat them in at any time. I'm going to tell you a little bit about TechSoup. Um, TechSoup is headquartered here in San Francisco, California. And as I talk to you a little bit more about TechSoup, we'd like you to chat out where you're from. List your city and state or the city and country that you're from. We are a 501c3 nonprofit like many of you joining us today. And we work to empower the organizations around the world to help them get the latest tools, skills, and resources to help them achieve their mission. And you can see from the map here that we serve almost every country in the world. Our impact. We have helped organizations get more than $5.4 billion, billion dollars, 
in technology products and grants to NGOs around the world. And these products and grants come from more than 100 generous corporate and foundation partners. And I see that there are some folks here from all over the country, Texas, Minnesota, California, oh, someone from Canada, someone from Yemen. Boy, I bet it's either really early or really late there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Wonderful. We have lots of folks on this webinar, so hopefully we'll be able to get to all of your questions before the end. And with that, I am going to turn it over to our amazing presenter, Linda. Thanks, Susan. We've, we've got to uh, stop telling people that I've been in this business since 1983. It makes me sound really old. Um, anyway, welcome everyone. Uh, today's presentation is um, Office 365 and um, Microsoft Cloud Licensing for Nonprofits. We've put this together today because um, Microsoft continues to release and update their nonprofit um, donation and discounted license offering, and it's getting out of it's really getting uh, it's a spectacular donation program from Microsoft. It's getting a little bit um, out of hand to understand if you just go to you know or if you just try try to figure it out online. So we're putting that together today for you. A little bit about us. Um, I work for a nonprofit called Tech Impact. We provide um, technology services to other nonprofits. Our mission is to um, help you meet your mission through the use of technology. And we do that by providing um, solutions, integration, and support serving, I need to update this slide, we serve over 200 nonprofits with managed IT support services. Um, we are a big proponent and implementation uh, provider for Microsoft Office 365 for nonprofits. In fact, I, I would say at this point we're the world leader in that space. So um, our, our deep understanding of the Microsoft Cloud has led us to work with over 700 nonprofits and, and charities across the globe. And um, I hear every day questions, I get questions every day in email or phone calls about help me sort through the licensing. So we thought it would be a great idea to put this together a webinar today to kind of explain this to um, the folks who've, attend, who've registered, so that's great. We're going to be talking about the um, basics of the Office 365 licensing, any add-ons that you can, uh, if you're already using Microsoft Office 365, we'll try to tell you about the add-ons that you can use for to enhance your licensing. We'll talk about the newest um, license in the Office 365 lineup called E5. We'll, um, I have a lot of information about the enterprise mobility suite of services. And then the, the latest announcement by Microsoft, which came um, at the end of last month, is a, um, a new feature, a new uh, discount for nonprofits in the Microsoft Azure licensing. So we'll start with Office 365. We'll just, uh, give you a quick review of what Microsoft Office 365 is and talk about the licensing that's available in that space. So with Microsoft Office 365 is a back-end platform provided and hosted by Microsoft directly that provides um, kind of four big areas of services. The first, we'll stop and start in the top left side of the screen with Outlook email. The Outlook email that you can use is hosted on a Microsoft Exchange server that provides each one of your users with a 50 gigabyte inbox or mailbox to do all of their email messaging, shared calendars and mailboxes, contact management, and more using Outlook, Outlook web app, or any mobile device that, that can connect through ActiveSync. Office 365 also includes file storage options using OneDrive for Business. Each one of your users gets a one terabyte OneDrive for Business account that's 
allows them to save files to their OneDrive folder on their local computer, or lo uh, local computer, whether it be a Mac or a PC, and then connect that or synchronize that with cloud storage on their Microsoft Office 365 account. So all files that are, used, that are stored in OneDrive are synchronized from the local computer to the cloud and vice versa so that you have access to your information from anywhere. File sharing is pro uh, provided through SharePoint Online. SharePoint Online is um, a space where you can put all of your shared files, thing files that you want your users to collaborate on. We can set, uh, it's set up with permissions and security so that we can have access to everything or, or block access, et cetera. But SharePoint Online is more than just file sharing. It's also an intranet, and it provides a space for us to um, provide information to our users, to connect our users to calendars and files and folders and information and discussion boards. It also allows us to make select information um, available to external constituents, whether they be board or volunteers or partners. So that's all done in SharePoint Online. In the communication space, there's two, um, there's two features that are available. One of them is Skype for Business. Skype for Business is, um, provides instant messaging, video chat, um, web-based meetings, and screen sharing options for um, any, everyone in the organization. You can also invite external constituents to participate with you in those areas as well, um, all using Skype for Business. Group conversations with Yammer. Yammer is like an internal or a private social network but where you can post things like um, stories and pictures and, and um, events and all of that kind of thing that is informational, but yet you don't want it to be released to the public, say, like on Facebook. You don't want it to be publicized, but you want that information to be shared with internal or select external constituents. You can do that right in Yammer. Finally, the Office applications that are available, all of your users have access to the web version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and, and OneDrive, I mean OneNote. These web applications can be used if you've got documents stored in the cloud, like sh on SharePoint Online or a OneDrive, you can actually use these web apps to um, view and edit content within those files. You can also use Outlook Web App to view and edit information in your, one, in, in your inbox or your calendar or whatever. So that is all included in all of the licensing that we'll talk about today in Office 365. You'll see that in the top right corner of this particular slide, there's another bullet point there that says in Installed versions, installed versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc., require a different license. And we'll talk about that as well. So this is everything that's in, included. The licensing that are available for Microsoft um, Office 365 at nonprofit pricing are shown here on this slide. And I have another follow-up slide to this as well. So there's five options that are available at the nonprofit. Um, in the nonprofit portal, um, <clears throat> pardon me, the top two are completely free to nonprofits. One of them is called the Business Essential Package. The Business Essential Package is meant for very small nonprofits with fewer than 300 employees or staff, um, and it gives you access to all the things that we showed on the last slide, the, the email, the OneDrive, SharePoint. Skype for Business, Yammer, et cetera. The other free option is called the E1. E stands for Enterprise. The E1 is a full donation. It has unlimited seats, so you can, off, you can have as many employees or, or licenses used as you need. It's also free. It also includes everything that we talked about on the last slide. At Tech Impact, we recommend 
that you use the E1 licenses, even if you're a small nonprofit, because with the E1 licenses, we had a little bit more flexibility to um, grow. We have a little bit more flexibility on the back end from a technical standpoint to allow you to do some certain things that you don't necessarily have access to in the business essentials. So if you wanted to find, if you wanted to take advantage of the full donation, you should probably go with the E1. The other three options that are listed on this screen, e, the business premium is a is available. It includes everything that the business essentials includes plus a subscription model to the Microsoft Office Productivity Suite. So that's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Publisher, OneNote, et cetera, et cetera, those Office applications that you want to install on your uh, machine to have full versions are included for $2 per user per month. That $2 per user per month allows that user to download and install Microsoft Office on up to five devices. We'll talk more about that. I have many different slides about that. Your E3 license is $4.50 per user per month. It includes all of the things that we've talked about already, plus some higher level email functionality for um, compliance and security purposes, including um, online archiving of email, encryption for legal hold purposes, retention, I mean encryption for uh, sending end-to-end -end encrypted email, retention for legal hold purposes. Um, so that's all bundled up into a $4.50 per user per month price. The newest license that's available for nonprofits is our E5 license. The E5 license includes everything that I've already talked about, plus some voice capability and integration with Skype for Business. And I've got, again, I've got many slides about that, and that rolls up to a $10 per user per month fee. So here's another slide that, um, just so you have a little something more to refer to later, that shows all of the licensing that are available. E1, again, E1 is probably your best bet to start off with and then add some functionality to in the future. So all of those license options are available to nonprofits and included with all of the subscriptions, no matter which one you select, Microsoft provides on the back end these features, spam and malware protection. So there's a, sp uh, a spam filtering system that, are, that is already available and, and configured to your email to protect your email. So if you're subscribing to a third-party spam filtering tool, you do not have to continue that subscription. You could just use the built-in from Microsoft. Anti-virus and anti-malware protection for the email services is also included. Now this does, this does not mean that you should not have e antivirus on your machine. You should absolutely still have antivirus loaded on the local machine. This just protects the email portion of, um, from, from that. All subscriptions also include um, community and phone support. So you are subscribing to Microsoft licensing directly from Microsoft and therefore they are going to provide you with 24 by 7 phone support for critical issues and web support for non-critical issues, which means that you can actually call Microsoft and get into their help desk queue and ask them questions and help and get resolution to any issue that you need to have issue to. Microsoft Office web apps are also included. We talked about this earlier. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Outlook are all uh, available via your web browser. You can use any web browser to connect to these things. And then they also uh, provide compliance. And, and there's many more compliance standards that they adhere to. I chose to just list a few of them on this slide because these are the ones that we get asked about most often, um, HIPAA being, of course, the, the biggest one. So E1, E3 licenses, what are the 
what are the difference between the two um, licenses that we find are most often adopted by nonprofits? E1, and remember this E stands for enterprise. The E1 comes with is a full donation, and it comes with the the 50 gigabyte mailbox and the one terabyte of OneDrive space, and um, your uh, Skype for Business, Yammer, Office web apps, etc. E3 contains all of that plus the advanced email and e-discovery for compliance. That wraps up to $4.50 a month. It also includes the Office desktop apps. All of the licensing that we've shown on the previous slides and on this slide are all mix and match, meaning that if you've got 100 employees, you can put 90 of them on the E1 license and only upgrade 10 to the E3. You can upgrade 10 more people later on. It doesn't matter. It's all mix and match. As long as you're, um, you know, it, it, as long as you understand the licensing and you know what you're getting to. So some some people say to me, well, that's great, Linda. I want the E1 license. I love that. I don't need the compliance or the advanced email features or the retention for legal hold purposes, but I do want to upgrade to the office subscription. I don't want to pay $4.50 per user per month. I noticed that that was included in the $2, and you can see here on the, on the screen, I'm jumping back, right? For $2 a month, I get everything that was included with the E1 plus that subscription to the fully installed Office product. Why would I want to pay $450 for that? Well, guess what? You don't have to. The good news is that you can actually add that to the E1 license for $2 per user per month. So there's no difference in the price moving from E1 adding the subscription-based office for $2 per user per month. So that's why at Tech Impact we say go with E1, and then if you needed to add the office subscription, you could do that for the same $2. You can also add on the online archiving and legal hold for an extra dollar per user per month. So you might say, geez, I want to have the E1, but I want to have online archiving or legal hold. I don't need the encryption services and all the other compliance that comes with E3. Well, now you can add that for a dollar per month. So you're going from free to either adding a dollar per user per month for the online archiving. You can add an extra $2 per user per month. So now you're at $3 instead of 450 or you can jump all the way up to the E3 license for the $4.50 per user per month if you needed all of that plus everything else in the E3 license. So here's a, a full accounting, if you will, of the features of the E1 licenses versus the E3 licenses here, um, which really, I, I think, really kind of helps um, understand what the difference is between these two licenses. So with your E1 licenses, in addition to the, the 50 gigabyte mailbox, et cetera, you've got um, a 14-day retention policy with your E1 license. So after 14 days, if you delete something from your inbox, after 14 days, Microsoft does not um, necessarily have to help you get that back. Whereas if you're on the E3 license, you have retention for an unlimited amount of time depending on what you want to set that retention policy up. Retention policy are good for organizations that deal with sensitive information or um, in email where a, uh, a third party might come to you and say, we need to have all the email correspondence about that particular case um, that your employee was working on 
that's why you would set retention for legal hold purposes. So you set a retention policy that says we deal with information about children. We send information about children um, through email. We correspond with the parent or we correspond with the foster home or whatever about a particular child that we're, we're working with. And we want to make sure that we hold on to all of those email um, communications, regardless if the user thinks that they've deleted them or not. We have it retained in an archive so that we can prevent, provide that information to a third party if we're asked to provide that, that communication. That's what, legal hold per, that's what the legal hold is. You might want to turn that on. You can add that to an E1 license for a dollar or you can upgrade to the E3 um, license. We also have end-to-end um, -end email encryption included in the E3 license. End-to-end -end email encryption means that you want to send an email out, and again, it has confidential or sensitive, sensitive information contained within the email. If you want to send that to an external recipient, the external recipient gets an email from, from you that says so-and-so uh, has sent you an email. Click on this link to be taken to the Microsoft Secure website where you can read and respond to that email. So you're sending sensitive information in email. It's not actually ever going out in email, so it can't be forwarded by that recipient. It can't be printed. It can't do anything. It's in an encrypted state and being read online and responded to online. That's included in the E3 license. The only way that you can get that functionality is by subscribing to the E3 license on that. So we talked about the add-ons. There are other features that are available. Um, I have a couple, of uh, a couple of informative slides here about what the online archiving provides for that $1 per user per month, um, about the retention for legal hold purposes and the compliance, et cetera. I also have an informational slide here about what's in included with the $2 per user per month um, office subscription. So you can see all of the um, titles that are included. So it's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, Publisher, and Microsoft uh, Skype, and Microsoft Access. That $2 per user per month allows that user to download and install all of these titles on up to five devices, including PCs, Macs, tablets, and um, mobile devices, cell phones. The mobile device is really cool. You download the app from the App Store, whether it's the Apple or the Android or whatever, or the Google Store. You download the app, and you can actually open, read, and edit Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote documents right on your mobile device. It's on my iPhone. I have an older version iPhone. It's really teeny tiny, but I can do it, which is great. Um, I've actually edited PowerPoint presentations on my iPhone in airports because I, you know, needed to do that. So, why would I subscribe to the Microsoft Office product for two dollars? Adding that to the E1 license for $2 or the $450, well, you don't necessarily have to. And here's a slide that we've put together showing you the options for accessing your Office applications. If you've got users in the organization who are very light users, they need to get in, they're case managers, they're case workers, they're working with your clients and constituents, they need to get into email, maybe an Excel file once in a while to update their time, and they're using mostly the electronic health record or the case management system that they work in, and that's it. You may never have to buy them Microsoft Office again. You may just want to use an E1 license and ask them to do everything that they need to do through a web browser. So connect to their Outlook through a web browser. Put the file, the Excel spreadsheet that they need to work on, put that in SharePoint Online, let them connect through a web browser, and edit their document, edit that spreadsheet right online. 
and the guess what? Done. Never have to pay for Microsoft Office again with your E1 license because the web apps are donated. Maybe you have users that do need to have a full version of Outlook or Word, Excel, or PowerPoint or whatever loaded onto the local machine. In that case, you can still go with your E1 license and then go to TechSoup. It says Technology Trust on this website or this slide. It should say TechSoup. And pay the admin fee and download um, the Microsoft Office and, and buy that volume license and put it on up to 50, you know, buy up to 50 licenses through TechSoup through the admin fee and then install it locally. You could also buy the e, get the E1 license for the full donation and then do that $2 per user per month. So the difference there is if you get your licensing through tech, uh, TechSoup through the admin fee, with that license you're allowed to install that version of Microsoft Outlook on one computer in the office and one computer at home for that user. With the subscription, that $2 per user per month allows that user to install on up to five devices and it includes the mobile app. So there's the difference between those two. If you need to have, if you have users that need all of the Microsoft Office applications plus the archiving or the encrypted email or whatever, and you're on the E3 license, the E3 license includes part of that $4.50 per user per month, includes the $2 subscription. So you might as well go ahead and have them download that and, and install it anyway. So here's a, a quick visual um, slide that kind of backs up that what we just talked about with your um, on the left hand side, you're showing, you know, using Microsoft Office web version only, and then the E1 with the cloud, the E1 with the local um, installation, and then your E3 with, you know, using it on up to five devices. So that's a lot of information. Um, Susan, I'm going to pause here and see if there's any um, questions bubbling up before we move on to our next, uh, the next portion of the presentation. Thanks so much, Linda. Yes, we've got quite a few questions. Um, there's a couple of folks about asking questions about licensing and the mix and match options for you know, like E3 for staff, E1 for volunteers, and exactly how many licenses are included in the E1. The E1 is an unlimited donation, so it's available for as many licenses as you need. The mix and match, what I mean by mix and match is that if you've got, um, you can always upgrade any licensing at any time. So you, if you say, well, I have 100 employees, do I have to make a choice to buy 100 E3 licenses if only 10 of my employees need the encryption? Not at all. You put 90 on, 90 of your employees will have E1, and then you can upgrade only the 10 that you need to E3. So that's what I mean by mix and match, right? I have a, a, another, um, I'm kind of scanning through some of the questions on my own. I noticed that there's uh, a couple of people who have brought up the question about E2 license. If you're already using Microsoft Office 365 and you go into your licensing portal and you say, well, geez, Linda's talking all about E1 and E3. How come it says E2 in my license portal? That is a, a holdover from the original Microsoft Office 365 release where they had an, an E2 option was the only option available for nonprofits. So if you've been on Office 365 like um, you know for some time now, you'll see that your license says E2. If it says E2 in your portal, you're getting all the features and functionality that are now available in the E1 license. So consider E2 to be the exact same thing as E1. Any other? I think there's, um, Monica wants to know, what is eDiscovery for compliance? I think that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the e-discovery for compliance is that um, retention for legal hold purpose, right? 
E-discovery means that if we're asked by an outside or entity to provide um, an email transaction about a particular case that we are working on or whatever, e-discovery means that we can go into the um, records and pull all the information out about that particular topic and provide that information to that third party. Great. Thanks. I think we'll take one more question. Um, people are wondering about other options. Um, Val is asking about the difference between Dropbox option versus SharePoint and OneDrive. So SharePoint and One yeah, so SharePoint is for shared files and OneDrive is for mostly for personal files. Dropbox is not included in the Microsoft Office Suite. It's a different product that allows you to do similar functionality with the file sharing. So Dropbox or Box.org allow you to um, centrally store files and then share them out with other people, similar to what SharePoint does. The difference is that SharePoint does much more than just that. It's also an intranet that allows you to do some other features and functionality that Dropbox or Box do not provide. So, and I will say that everything that I talked about up until this point in the, in the webinar, we invite you and encourage you to join. We have a free demo. We actually show you this in action every other Thursday at Tech Impact. It's a free demo. Um, we do it every other Thursday um, afternoon on the East Coast, so whatever time it is for you. And we encourage you to join that, that web demo to see it in action because I, I think it makes more sense when you see it you know, happening. We demo the email functionality, OneDrive, SharePoint, Skype for Business, and Yammer. If we have enough time to do the Yammer, we, we also demo that as well. So great. Uh, great. great. I'll question. chat that out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, so we're going to jump into, so there are some other add-ons. Uh, I, I also noticed some questions about SharePoint storage. Um, your SharePoint storage is, oh, Susan, I didn't update this for you. Um, we need to make a change to this slide. Um, OneDrive for business is personal storage for each user gets one terabyte of space. Your Exchange inbox is 50 gigabytes per user of space. SharePoint is a different animal. With SharePoint, the organization gets a lump sum of shared space to use in SharePoint, and that starts at one terabyte. This slide is wrong. It's one terabyte of shared space, no matter how many users you have. Whether it's one or 101 or 1,001, you get one terabyte of space. And then every license that you have adds a half a gigabyte or 500 megabytes to that one terabyte space. And that's shared among all users for your SharePoint. If you need more, you can purchase more from Microsoft for 20 cents per gigabyte per month, which is really, really inexpensive. I mean, it's really cheap. So there's one add-on. Another add-on is Microsoft Project. If you are in the space where you need to use Microsoft Project, you can add that to your licenses directly through your Office 365 portal. Um, I believe that it is um, probably less expensive than what I have shown on the screen now. It might be down to $5 per user per month now for the online version. Visio Pro, if you need to make diagrams in Microsoft Visio, you can download, uh, you can download that um, for $5 per user per month. Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online is uh, pricing varies from $3.75 to $15 per user per month on that. Power BI, BI stands for Business Intelligence. Um, Part of Power BI is already included in Microsoft Office 365 for free, um, but you can upgrade to the Power BI Pro for $3 per user per month. And Enterprise Mobility Suite, which I have a couple of slides on later, is $1.65 per user per month. 
these are all things that you can add into no matter which license you've chosen, whether it be the business premium or the business essentials, E1, E3, or E5, all of these things you can add on um, at, at the pricing shown here. So we'll talk about a couple of them. So Microsoft Project is um, a project management tool that allows you to create projects and, and manage them using Gantt charts and, and all of that kind of stuff. You can do that um, as a single user or you can do it collaboratively using Project Online. Visio Pro for Office 365 allows you to create diagrams. Uh, we use it for network diagrams for our, you know, for all of our uh, managed service clients. We diagram their, you know, network with it, et cetera. You can also do really cool org charts and things like that online. Microsoft Dynamics CRM, uh, CRM stands for Constituent Relationship Management. It's a database where you could use Microsoft Dynamics to do things like manage your donors or members or other constituents, volunteers, et cetera. Um, it connects directly into Microsoft Office 365, integrates with Microsoft Outlook, um, which is really nice if you want to um, track communication. So you send an email out to someone, that email correspondence is tracked directly into CRM so that you know the last time you emailed that particular donor or whether the donor, um, you know, gave you money or, or bought a ticket to your gala or whatever that can all be tracked in Microsoft Dynamics CRM and is the information is available pretty readily um, through Microsoft Office 365. You can actually look all that stuff up. So again, that's a $3.75 for users who just want to look at the information all the way up to $15 per user per month for those who actually want to interact with the full, you know, have full control of the database and that kind of a thing. Microsoft Power BI, BI is business intelligence. Microsoft Power BI does really cool things with data, allows you to do visualizations and dashboarding, um, uh, allows you to do mapping so that you can see, you know, hey, where are all of our donors coming from or where did we, you know, provide services, you know, for families, where are our families located. You can actually pull that up on maps and that kind of a thing. There are certain features of Power BI that are already embedded in Microsoft Excel 2013 or higher, so 2013 or 2016, including Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power Map. It's already included. You don't have to pay for it. You just have to go into your Excel add-on manager and add that in so that you can use that functionality. But if you wanted to do some, some higher level things like create dashboards or create, um, uh, create and share information in reports and collaboratively, then you would pay for Power BI and that would be a $10 per user per month fee, which is really inexpensive. And you wouldn't need it for everyone. You would just need it for those people who needed to pr produce the interactive information. So that's uh, Power BI. There's a new feature that I get a lot of questions about, which is this new E5 license. The E5 license with Microsoft Office 365 allows you to add, um, sorry, I'm going to go to this one first, allows you to add in, if you're using Skype for Business, allows you to have a, an actual phone number that people can call into when you're doing Skype meetings. So if you have a Skype meeting going and you say, geez, um, I want to invite someone who doesn't have the ability to connect to the audio portion through their, um, through their computer. In the past, what we've done is we've created a Skype meeting, and then we've gone to like free conference call, and we've set up a conference number, and we've done it that way. With the E5 license, you'll have a phone number that actually goes right into the meeting invitation for Skype meetings, and people can dial into that. You can also dial out, using Skype for Business, you can actually dial out, and I'll 
show you a quick thing of that. So this is what the Skype for Business dial pad looks like. You can actually use your computer to make phone calls to regular phone numbers. So you can dial, you know, the area, the ten-digit number, and actually use Skype for Business right through your computer to make calls to telephones. So I get a lot of questions about this. Um, so that's great. Now we don't have to have a phone system anymore. Well, hold on. It's not all there yet. What it can't do is it. You can't call. Right now, you can't call standard telephones. So you can dial numbers that are like uh, digital numbers. You can make and receive phone calls, um, use a conference line, but you cannot have an automated attendant. So right now, like for instance, at Tech Impact, we have 53 people that work here at Tech Impact. Um, we all have an extension. So when you dial Tech Impact, you dial an 800 number, you're Meet, you're met with an automated attendant that says if you know your party's extension, dial it now or press this option or that option. And my extension's 111, so you would dial 111 and you would get to me. With the Skype for Business E5 add-on, that functionality is not available. So if you wanted to do an E5 add-on for 53 people, we would have 53 different phone numbers that we would all have to remember, and we wouldn't be able to three-digit dial each other by our extension. So if I wanted to dial Sarah, I couldn't just pick up the phone like I do now and dial extension 400 and get to her. I'd have to know her 10-digit Skype for Business number, and I would have to use Skype for Business to make that call out. So for that reason, Skype for Business using the E5 licensing is not going to replace your regular phone system. It's just not going to do that yet. If you're a very small organization, you have two or three people who work um, who work for the organization, maybe it would work for you because you'd only have two or three phone numbers to, um, to use. The E5 license starts at, I'm going to show you the next slide here, the E5 license starts at $10. In order to then go ahead and start to make, you can see at the, the bottom right hand side of the screen, it says PSTN calling DOM for domestic. You have to add an additional $12. So you're starting with a $10 license. If you want to be, have the ability to dial people's phone numbers and connect to their phone using your Skype for Business platform, your total cost per month would be $22. If you wanted to do international calling, your total, do, your total monthly fee would be $34 to make that happen. It still doesn't include automated attendant. It still doesn't include um, three-digit dial. It doesn't include call forwarding and, and that kind of thing as well. So. It's a great feature. I believe that Microsoft will make the automated, I, I, and I know this to be true. I don't believe it. I know it to be true. Microsoft will be adding automated attendant in the future, and they will be adding the, the three-digit dial and that kind of a thing. Not there yet, but it will get there. So how do I find all of this um, license features in Microsoft Office 365. There's a licensing portal in the Office 365 Administrators portal. Take a look and see the red arrow where it says you have to click on Nonprofit Plans. You need to click on Nonprofit Plans to weed out all of the for-profit or the, the retail versions of these features. So that's how you have to do it. I'm going to jump in now to Security Features and Management. Microsoft has added many security features, and the, and the biggest one is, is called Enterprise Mobility Suite, or EMS. Enterprise Mobility Suite costs $1.65 per user per month, and it gives you features if you're an administrator that's worried about things like how do I have um, user authentication across 
my um, Office 365? How does that integrate with my, you know, um, Active Directory, et cetera? It allows for what we call Active Directory Lite or Azure AD. Azure AD is included with your EMS. It allows you to set control so that users have to log into their computer using their Office 365 credentials. Also allows you to remotely wipe devices, which is terrific if you've got users who are on laptops or mobile devices and lose that device or, or whatever. You can wipe all the Office 365 content from that as soon as it comes online again. So that's really great. It also allows you to do um, connect into an Active Directory, um, make an Active Directory authentication back into your um, on-premise um, domain controller. It allows you to do digital rights management and advanced threat analytics, which is cool. Also allows you to do so. Digital rights management means <coughs> that we can set. Pardon me. We can set. Um, content in SharePoint or OneDrive or email or wherever in Office 365 that is confidential and restricted, meaning that that content cannot leave the Office 365 space. Even if a user tries to copy information and paste it, it won't paste. If they try to attach a particular file from SharePoint to an email and send it to external recipients, it won't go. Um, they can't do a screenshot. They can't do anything with that information because it's been restricted through digital rights management. They can't get that content to um, leave, the, leave the organization unless it's approved. So really cool stuff, and that's $1.65 per user per month. I think it's well worth the money. Um, a little bit more about Active Directory. Um, Azure Active Directory Premium allows Windows 10. Here's a, a, a really important part of this. If, if you're on the line now and this is interesting to you, uh, remember Windows 10 only can be cloud joined to your um, Active Directory using their off, the Office 365 username and password as the credentials. There's no directory synchronization, no complicated setup needed. It just automatically enrolls that computer into mobile device management and allows the user to log in with Office 365 credentials, which is really cool. Also does two-way Active Directory synchronization. So if a user changes their password in Active Directory, it automatically changes the password in Office 365 or vice versa. Um, Yep, we talked about the Azure Rights Management with the mobile device management and allows you to keep content um, safe and secure and not allow it to go outside of the organization. So um, a lot of information. I'm, I'm going to finish up by talking about the latest donation from Microsoft, which is Microsoft Azure Services. This was just announced. This is a little bit different from the donations that we've talked about up to this point. Up to this point, we're talking about getting licenses from Microsoft on a per user basis. So, you know, full donation with your E1, adding licenses for X amount of money per user per month, and doing your, um, you know, rolling out the features and functionality in that way. With the Microsoft Azure platform, Microsoft is giving each organization a $5,000 per year credit toward any Azure service that you need to build out. So the Azure service is, is, is very complicated. We have a whole webinar that's just de dealing with what is Microsoft Azure, but basically it's a, the ability for you to build out servers in the cloud to, you know, host whatever, you know, a, a database or um, your Active Directory or a terminal server or something like that. You're building that out in the cloud. Microsoft allows you to have a $5,000 per year credit towards that. It also allows you to do things like, like if you wanted um, a disaster recovery site. I have these on-premise servers. I want to 
replicate them in the cloud, you can do that using Microsoft Azure. If you wanted to build out an application to, to do like big data analytics, you could go ahead and build that out in Microsoft Azure. All of anything that you want to do is a $5,000 per year credit. Figure $400, roughly $400 a month available to your nonprofit so that you could go ahead and do that. Some more information, right? So you want, uh, it, it'll allow you to do authentication. It allows you to host something that doesn't, you know, that there's not a cloud solution for, back up and extend, or build something from scratch. You can do all that. I highly recommend that if this is something that you're interested in, that you go to our Azure webinar. We have that running um, at least once a month. That's a lot. Right? So um, I've included this link. This is where you're going to go to directly to the Microsoft website, um, to the Microsoft Philanthropies website, and look up your product donations. You can see the offers here are with the Office 365, Azure, Dynamics, Power BI, Enterprise Mobility Suites, Windows 10, etc. Plenty of information right online there. So this is how we can help you at Tech Impact. We, are, we can provide planning projects, so we'll help you plan to roll out, to adopt and roll out Microsoft Office 365 and or Microsoft Azure. We do implementation projects including email migrations, SharePoint setups, Azure implementation. We have a lot of free and paid training on Office 365 features that you can take advantage of. We also provide ongoing support. So if your organization does adopt Microsoft Office 365 and you want more than just the Microsoft support that comes with it, um, we can certainly help you with that as well. Again, we have lots of free web demos on all of this content. I, I encourage you to, um, and, and Susan's going to now tell you more about all the webinars that are coming up with TechSoup as well. Right, Susan? Thanks. I sure am. That was an amazing and whirlwind trip through all of those great resources, Linda. Thank you. Um, thanks, and I think you've addressed a lot of the questions that we had in our queue. And we've tried to chat out some additional resource links to folks. And as a quick reminder, um, you will receive a follow-up email in a few days that will contain this a link to this presentation, a link to the recording, and all of the resources that we're mentioning. So don't panic if you haven't been able to go through the chat and copy all those, those resources. We will give those to you in a few days. Um, while I'm going to go through some of the upcoming events, I do want to find out from all of you on this webinar um, that have stayed through the hour, um, chat to us one thing you learned or something that you're going to share with a colleague about uh, the cloud and what you've learned. And while you're chatting that um, in the chat box, I did want to remind everyone that we do have a new platform where we offer asynchronous courses, which are online on-demand courses. Um, it's called TechSoup Courses, and you can, get, you can find it at this link, which is techsoup.course.tc. And you can go to our catalog, and there are five courses in our TechSoup course catalog. We also want to remind you that TechSoup does offer Microsoft products. You can go to our website and find out more about the amazing resources that Microsoft, off Microsoft offers nonprofits. And um, upcoming webinars, we do have a couple coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. We have one for early childhood educators and folks interested in um, STEM learning. We also have an amazing presentation by TechSoup's Jordan McCarthy coming up on the 15th of November just before Thanksgiving in the U.S. where you can power up your data with Microsoft's Power BI. And I did notice a lot of you were asking questions about Power BI. Here's what Jordan will explain how this works um, and how you can create very powerful visualizations. And we also have a webinar coming up, um, Fix It at the Library with Do-It-Yourself Repair Programs. 
So I want to extend a huge thank you to Linda. She is incredibly knowledgeable. Um, I always learn something on every webinar she presents. So thank you Linda. Thanks to Tech Impact for being our partner. Um, a big thank you to Becky on the back end for answering a lot of specific questions that you folks have had. Thank you Becky. And um, I do want to thank ReadyTalk for sponsoring our webinars. And most importantly, all of you. We know that your most valuable resource is your time. So we do appreciate you sticking with us, coming here today for the hour, and we hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great rest of your week, and enjoy your weekend.